This episode of the Tips of Travellers podcast is supported by DK Eyewitness Travel Top 10 Guides, the best-selling pocket-sized travel guidebooks with top 10 lists covering destination highlights, a pull-out map, things to do, the best places to dine and drink, and more. DK Eyewitness Travel Top 10 Guides show you the 10 best of everything. This is Tips for Travellers. Inspiration, advice and tips on finding and having amazing travel experiences on both land and at sea. Get more tips on must-see and must-do travel at tipsfortravellers.com. Well, hello and welcome to another episode. Today we're heading off to Guatemala and the magical city of La Antigua. It really was a remarkable place to visit. I sort of knew a little bit about it, I'd heard about it, but visiting it was absolutely magnificent. La Antigua, it's surrounded by three huge volcanoes, so it's in a very beautiful part of the countryside. It's thousands of meters above sea level, and it's in a much cooler part of Guatemala. So if you're sort of more around the coastal areas, it's very hot. But as you sort of go up through these volcanoes and higher up, it's a little bit cooler. And it was actually the capital of Guatemala uh, until three earthquakes in the 1700s convinced the Spanish. And I'll talk a little bit about the history a little bit later, but they controlled the country. They eventually just got fed up of all these earthquakes and instability and they abandoned it. And they created a new one, which is called Guatemala City, which of course is still the capital today. Uh, But what happened is you've got these beautiful cathedrals, these Spanish cathedrals, these grand buildings, and they, after they were abandoned, they lay exposed and they were sort of being reclaimed by nature. And then people started revisiting, repopulating it. And today you've got these incredibly magnificent structures dotted around this very colorful, interesting city. So you've got a mixture of these sort of ruins but well preserved uh, with sort of more contemporary buildings there's a lot of energy there's a lot of vibrancy around Lantigua it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of this uh, story and the beautiful buildings and it really was one of my absolute all-time favorite places that I've visited so let me talk a little bit about the history because the history is kind of interesting that Guatemala has had three main sort of phases in its history. All the reading I did before I went spoke about these three phases. There's the Mayan Empire, which a lot of people know about. You know, there's very uh, distinctive cities, towers and structures. And of course, many people travel to this whole region to see old Mayan uh, cities and, and structures. However, Lantig was not in the area where the Mayan Empire was really strong. They're much more towards the border with Honduras. So it, you know, the Mayan Empire didn't have a massive impact in this area specifically from what I'd seen and, and read anyway. But the really big influence, as I alluded to in the setup, was the Spanish. Now, the Spanish conquered and they controlled much of Central and Latin America for about three centuries, from about the 1500s to the 1800s. And they had a huge influence over the creation, uh, the buildings, and as I'd mentioned earlier, the abandonment of La Antigua. Then the third sort of phase was after independence, although it's had a fairly traumatic time. It it became independent from Spain in the 1800s, around about 1821, I think it was. And it sort of drifted between various sort of alliances. So it was part of the Federal Republic of Central America. Then there was lots of instability. There was some democracy. There was some dictatorships. There was a big civil war as recent as 1996. But since then, it's become much more stable. Uh, the economy is growing and, and it's really focused on coffee, macadamia nuts and fruit. And those are the three things that you'll see a lot around the city is uh, coffee, very proud of coffee, lots of macadamia nuts, fruits uh, and that kind of uh, stuff. Now, La Antigua was actually the third capital city of Guatemala. So actually, as you'll see, the capital city of Guatemala kind of moved around quite a lot. And the first was a really abandoned because it was very unstable, uh, largely because of uh, there was various uprisings against the Spanish, etc. The second was damaged by volcanoes, because as you already have already mentioned, you know, there is a lot of these massive big volcanoes in Guatemala. It eventually became the capital in 1543, and it was the capital for 200 years. But then there was a whole series of earthquakes which really wrecked and and caused havoc in the city. The last was in uh, 1773, 
and it was known as the Santa Marta earthquakes. It caused a lot of damage and it convinced the Spanish authorities that they needed to abandon the city. They needed to find a more stable part of the country and that's why the capital then moved to Guatemala City. So after this move, the city became largely deserted, but it, it sort of became much more famous it became uh, much more hip, if that's the right word. Hip's probably the wrong word. It became much more uh, fascinating to people when Prince Wilhelm of Sweden, he visited the area in the 1920s and he wrote about La Antigua in his book Between Two Continents and he started posting photographs of these incredible buildings. So eventually the city became a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of these incredible ruins, these partly preserved grand buildings, uh, and some of which have sort of been restored, but they really are quite something. So let me give you a couple of key facts I need to know, and then we'll get into some tips if you're uh, thinking of visiting La Antigua. So it used to be a very big city back in the 1770s when it was the capital. It was about 60,000 people. But after all those earthquakes, most of the people moved. And so by the sort of the mid-1800s, there was only about 9,000 people living there. And even though it's become a very big place, uh, a tourist destination. The population is still only around half of what it was in the 1700s, so it's only about 30,000 people. It's a very easy city to get around. It's not a particularly big city, but it's uh, laid out in this grid pattern. So you've got roads, you know, north to south, east to west. You've got the key government buildings around a central square. So you've got the central square in the middle of the of La Antigua. Then all the uh, the roads are in a grid, so it's very easy to get around. But the central square is very magical. It's a very important focal point for the city. It's where a lot of the locals meet, uh, visitors go. There's a great fountain in the center. I'll talk about the fountain. It is in a very beautiful part of the world because as you look around, you've got these three monstrous big volcanoes. And another thing it's very well known for is language schools. Apparently lots of uh, language schools are set up in Antigua, so a lot of people will come and study uh, you know, Spanish and whatever uh, within, um, within the area. So in terms of my overall observations, I've already said it, it's a gorgeous city. I love that it was very easy to get around. Uh, you've got these beautiful, colorful, low-level buildings. You've got lots of quaint little local shops and they sell handicrafts and they sell food. And then you've got these grand buildings from the 1700s. So it's, it's a really interesting mix of the quaint and the grand. The people were incredibly friendly, very welcoming. Uh, they you know, were extremely welcoming of visitors because a lot of um, income's coming in. So it's, it's very well received. And actually they do look after visitors. I'll talk a little bit later about security and safety, um, which you know, we were kind of, before I went there, we, we were given a lot of sort of concerns about uh, safety, you know, don't carry cameras and, you know, be on the watch out. But I didn't find it any more so than any other place I've, I've really been to. And there's a lot of uh, tourist police around and, you know, people are very friendly and very helpful. Uh, there are some people trying to, you know, start selling things and can be a little bit pushy. But overall, I, I found it uh, perfectly fine. But lots and lots of visitors there, as long as you stay on those sort of main grids. The other thing which is fantastic is they have these huge buses, these very decorative buses, these patterns and colors and these big grand buses that sort of drive around uh, like, um, you know, these big sort of features in the city. They're, they're really magnificent. And then these little sort of tuk-tuk uh, taxis that'll whiz around on the sort of bumpy cobbled street. So there's a really great feel around the city. It does feel very exotic in many ways. Handicrafts are everywhere you go, uh, I guess because there's so many tourists going there, but they're very beautiful. And there's lots of uh, some big shops, some independent vendors, and it's quite hard not to spend because you have these beautiful, colorful fabrics, uh, little uh, wooden crafts, beautiful, beautiful things. So let me talk about some of my overall tips for travelers, and I'll get into some very specific things to do if you're going to um, La Antigua. Now, I've, as I've already mentioned, you know, the, there was a lot of damage by earthquakes, but the city, it's well worth visiting. So one of my big tips is you know, really do consider going to La Antigua if you're in this part of the world, because you see these majestic buildings and the more recent buildings, it's a very, very beautiful city. It's like, it's almost like nothing I've, I've been to before. And I love that sense of, wow, this is really fresh and different because it's, it's just so beautifully preserved and the stories behind it are great. Now, what you need to really do though, is plan quite carefully your trip to make sure what you want to see and in what order or use a guide. The city is quite compact. It's quite easy to get around, as I said. But if you just wander around 
without knowing what you're seeing. You are going to miss some of the interesting museums. You're going to uh, miss some of the buildings because there are some buildings that are sort of, you know, there's a little uh, sort of alleyway or a little entrance and then sort of behind it reveals these great things. So there are a whole lot of people that visited at the same time of us and they basically said, oh, well, there's not a lot to see here. Uh, we're actually... I had quite the opposite. You know, I really struggled to get to see everything I want to see. I had to make choices. And, you know, so you need to make sure either you're very well prepared or you go with a guide who knows how to find all the things. Because even finding little interesting restaurants, you know, often there'll be a little sort of alleyway and you go in behind it and it opens to a big courtyard and there'll be some great restaurants and things there. Same with the museums. So you need to really be clear about what you want to do. So how, how do you uh, research it how do you find out obviously listen to the podcast is one of the ways that will obviously help but the other thing is there's a great brochure that you can pick up from the tourist office now if you're coming to uh if you're coming to guatemala on a cruise ship and you're docking in uh, puerto uh, quetzal uh, you can get it from the desk they have a, a desk an information desk at the entrance uh, you know when you come off the ship and um, that they set up in the cruise terminal. Now, Antigua is a couple of, you know, an hour or a bit's driveway, so you're probably going to either go on uh, a taxi or you might be on some sort of tour. We actually went on a on your own tour, so basically we got the transport up there. We had a whole day exploring and then got transport back. But if not, there is, um, you know, tourist office, uh, you know, conveniently located in around the central square, just off the central square, uh, or if, if you're staying there, you'll find them in hotels or hostels or, or whatever. It's a, it's a very compact leaflet, but it's got a really good map and it, of everything you see. And what they've done, and which I like in the map, uh, is they've classified it by uh, ruins and religious sites, open site ruins. So these are things where you know the, there's not very much left of it. Places of interest, then they have another group, museums, uh, handicraft markets, and then also it tells you where the police is, the post office, the bank, ATM machines, shopping. But what's quite nice is they've grouped everything by topic. So if you've got a particular interest, and then they've got a very nice little short summary of each site, uh, covering the history and the importance. And it was really great to use. I found it perfect in terms of being able to plan what I want to see. And also when you go somewhere, it gave you some information. Also, most of the places you go into will have some information either on um, boards which are there and I guess that maybe that was part of when they did the World uh, Heritage Site but there'll be fine boards in Spanish or in Engl English explaining more or little leaflets so there's quite good information in each of the places but if you do want to hire a guide uh, relatively inexpensive so for example uh, there was guides on offer for about US $10 per person if you're in a group of six or four you know or so for a four hour walking tour and you can find them in the tourist office uh, there is the or via the official tourist site the official tourist site is visitguatemala.com so very easy to remember visitguatemala.com so very easy to, to you know perhaps connect up with a guy before or you can literally just go there and you'll find there's a, a lot of guides accessible ready to go um, because they used to particularly if there's big ships in uh, but you know there's so many tourists going uh, to Lantigua so there's always guides available uh, or, of course, you can use a, a guidebook, which is helpful. You know, you have uh, companies like Dawn and Kinsley who, uh, with their um, eyewitness travel guides, who produce various materials uh, on all places around the world. You know, guidebooks obviously a great um, a thing to do. So those, those are the, the sort of tips I have. Other tips is be alert and be sensible. Now, what I've mentioned to you is, you know, overall the city is safe, but you need to be watch out for pickpockets. Minimize the amount of valuables you have. Keep to the busy areas, which is easy to do because, you know, all the places you're going to want to go and see are very touristy. But there are a lot of tourist police around the city and they're in all the key points that visitors go. And they keep an eye on crime. They're also quite good if you're really being hassled by uh, vendors and they're being a little bit too pushy. But you'll also see armed guards in some places. So, for example, uh, at the ATMs, there was normally an armed guard at the banks. Some of the jade factory shops, jade uh, is a very big industry and they have these um, beautiful jade factory shops you'll often find arm guards there now i didn't take my dslr camera with me but i really wish i had because there's beautiful sites beautiful buildings to photograph and it's fine you know um we got a little bit you know took to heart too much the sort of the warnings and i should probably should know better being having traveled a lot but you know just you do get a sense of uh they Crime must be an issue because there are so many police around, but on the other side, crime is an issue because there are so many police around, but you'll find them around a lot. 
In terms of money, uh, US dollars is great in small denominations. So you don't need to really have a lot of local currency. Now the local currency is, is called the Quetzals, Q-U-E-T-Z-A-L-S. But pretty much everywhere will take US dollars. So including en sites with entry fee, they will take US dollar. People selling crafts will take US dollar. One dollar is about 7.5 uh, Quetzals at this time. Uh, if you want to go to things like, the, like a supermarket or some of the restaurants of the main tourist areas, you'll need local currency there or quite simply a debit or credit card. So that was fine, the supermarkets, the restaurants. We went to try to go to some more sort of local restaurants and we just used um, our, our credit card and that was perfectly fine. One thing that's very important though is when you look at your US dollars is the, the Guatemala residents, and it's true in La Antigua, will not take any notes with any damage or any marks on them. So make sure your notes are in great condition without any marks because they will not take them at all. And that's very important. Uh, make sure, you, of course, you've got photo ID with you if you want to change money or use a debit or credit card. Uh, we found that they did want to see ID, photo ID, before they took um, a credit card. So that's also very important. Another key tip I've got, and I do tend to talk about this quite a lot, but I think it's, you know, I've really felt this very much in Guatemala, is try and support the local economy. Now, Guatemala, it's a relatively poor country, and really try and support the local people. You do get a sense that, you know, it's not a very affluent country. And so what I try to do is I try to avoid the organized trips by the cruise line. I made sure I try to use uh, and encourage people to use local guides. I only bought things at local from vendors. We went to small, you know, family-owned restaurants where you ended up, you know, doing lots of pointing and gesticulating because I don't speak Spanish and whatever. So, but it was fine. Um, you know, the the handicraft that you see around the city is magnificent. You'll want to buy it, and uh, things like the woven fabric items were fantastic. Bead items, necklaces, ornaments beautiful carved wood items, leather belts and goods, that was also good. And then there's the more commercial jade stuff. Now the more commercial jade stuff are in more organized factories. So, you know, perhaps think more about, you know, those sort of fabrics, beads, carved wood items, which are done more by, you know, independent sort of local people. The other thing which is very popular is free trade coffee and chocolate. That We saw a lot of that around, um, and that's another great thing to buy. Lots of street vendors, lots of markets you'll keep coming across them all the time now if you do come on a cruise ship and you come into uh, Puerto Quetzal they've created this little uh, sort of oasis there and there's some beautiful uh, uh, local vendors in there and in fact some of the vendors I spoke to there they were actually from La Antigua and they said because there's so many tourism uh, tourists there and there's so much competition they actually found sometimes setting up their stall uh, where there's less competition although there was a lot of people set up there that was also uh, great Overall, I found the street vendors pretty good if you just set a firm, clear no, whereas other people felt more harassed. So maybe it's about being really sort of uh, firm if you if you find you're being harassed, particularly in that sort of uh, central uh, square area. Spanish is a local language. There's very mixed levels of speaking English, even in the more touristy areas. Uh, it will, you know, it's obviously a little bit higher, but don't assume everyone will speak it. So, you know, know a couple of basic Spanish terms, you know, uh, hola, Hello, a buenos dias, good morning, um, por favor, or por favor, gracias, cuánto uh, cuesta, uh, I think is how much, uh, and no, it's very easy to remember, it's no. If you are in a wheelchair or have l l limited mobility or unsteady in your feet, Atlantic is going to be a bit of a challenge because the streets are cobbled, there's very narrow concrete pavements. It's not very easy to get around if you are in a wheelchair and stuff. So that's something to bear in mind. Or if you're just unsteady on your feet. Um, the other thing is most of the museums seem to be closed on a Sunday. So if you do uh, want to go to the museums and you're very interested in the museums, then Sunday's not a great day to be there. So plan, you know, if they have a couple of days, bear in mind Sunday's not going to be your museum day. So let me get into my absolute must see and must do. Now there's a lot to see. So these are the things that I found really beautiful, really interesting, and the things that I would sort of recommend. As I've said, grid system, and actually what's interesting about the grid system, not it, only is it easy to get around, but actually what I discovered as I worked through it is you can pretty much walk in a rectangle around the city and you'll pretty much get to see the places you want to do in one circle without much diversion off that circuit so that's quite good 
So what I would suggest is um, get dropped off or ask directions to uh, Cala Oriente 5th Street. So that's Cala Oriente 5th Street. And the reason I'm saying that is that's where the tourist information center is. So if you haven't got the map or you want to arrange a tour or you want to get advice, then basically that's the place to go. The tourist information center is just off the town square. It's Cala Oriente in the 5th uh, Street. Then basically when you come out of there, I mean, they'll point you there, head towards the town square. So you've got your map, head to the town square. If you just want to start somewhere else and you don't want to skip that thing, you've got your map, head for the town square and it's very easy to find. The town square's slap bang in the middle of the uh, the, the city. So stroll around the square, uh, enjoy the fountain. The fountain's a very beautiful fountain. There's a series of bare chested women with water spraying out of their nipples, which I'm not entirely sure what that's about and there's some story to it, but it's, it's a very nice fountain. Um, around the square, there's some very uh, beautiful uh, old governmental buildings, some other attractions. So there's quite a lot to see here. So uh, things I would really recommend is the Palace of the Captain's General. Now you can tell by my attempts at Spanish so far I don't speak Spanish, so I apologize if I'm massacring the Spanish. But the Palace of the Captain's General, Palacios de los Capitanes. Hopefully that's good enough. And it's the, the, it's beautiful buildings. They've got some lovely columns. And this used to be the uh, sort of uh, the the center for all of Central American government uh, Central American government during the Spanish rule until the capital was relocated, and now they have exhibitions and events here. It's it's a beautiful building. It's just on the well, that'd be the south, I guess, of the um, of the square. Very nice building, beautiful building. Then you've got the city hall there, and they have a very interesting um, antique books and weapons museum. So particularly if you're into that kind of thing, uh, and that's a great, great museum. Then basically you head west, so you head away from the square, kind of, um, and you go to the amazing, this is probably my favorite thing in the whole city, the San Jose Cathedral. It dates back to 1680, and it was a huge cathedral. It, it, it's got this grand white front, and then inside you've got these beautiful columns, arches, and no roof. It, so you have this scale and a breathtaking experience, and because you know this beautiful weather, certainly when we're there, you've got this blue sky and these arches and columns. But what's interesting about it is a lot of people you'll find, like we were there on a Sunday, for example, and people were meeting there, still having religious meetings and get-togethers, even though the cathedral is now just a ruin. But it was a beautiful, beautiful place. That's the San Jose Cathedral. Absolutely magnificent. There's a small fee to get in. I can't remember what it was now. It's a couple of dollars, two or three dollars, maybe even less than that. But that's an absolute must-see. And there's some beautiful pictures. I'll put some extra pictures on the on the show notes of that. So you know, if you go to uh, Tips of Travelers and search for La Antigua, and um, I'll, I'll put some pictures of the inside of the San Jose Cathedral. Magnificent. Now, just across the road from the cathedral is the Colonial Art Museum. Now this used to be the San Carlos de Borromeo University. And now this beautiful building, it's architecture, it's very beautiful. It's got uh, hallways and it's got rooms that are now have got paintings, they've got furniture, they've got sculptures from the 16th to 18th century. You could spend quite a long time here. So that's the Colonial Art Museum. So those two things are right next to each other, the San Jose Cathedral and across the road, the Colonial Art Museum, which is a, a pretty big thing. Those are two I would strongly, strongly recommend you see. And they're sort of in the way you walk around. So you've got the square, you've got the cathedral and the museum. Those are three kind of almost do early on and really, really, uh, you know, spend time enjoying those. Then you basically keep heading sort of west a couple more blocks, three blocks, and then you will turn north. Uh, so you get to, pretty much then you'll turn north. And it's up um, Cala de la Nobles uh, is the name of the, the street and you head to uh, Santo Domingo. Now this is where the temple and the convent of uh, Santo Domingo used to be. And it has a couple of very interesting things. It's got the Pre-Columbian Art Museum, it's got the Archaeology Museum, it's got the Silverware Museum, it's got the Modern Glass Museum, as well as arts and uh, sort of popular crafts. And I can't pronounce this one, it's the uh, Sacatepeques Museum. I think that's how you pronounce it. But really interesting there, so you basically head away from the museum, you'll get to Cala de la Nobles, uh, and you head to San Domingo, and you've got all those uh, really interesting museums. Then you sort of head uh, east, so you're sort of heading back into town, you head along a Cala Oriente 2nd Street to the Capuchinas Convent. 
This was the last female convent found in the city. And there's a big attraction here because they've got the circular tower with 18 cells around it. There's a museum, there's paintings, other items from the colonial uh, era. You keep heading away, you know, down once you've been to the Cappuccino's convent, keep heading sort of back into town if you like. And then you'll get to Cala del Arco and you'll see one of the iconic sites of uh, Lantiga, which is the arch. Santa Catalina's Arch. Now on the arch, there's uh, lots of upmarket restaurants, there's shops, there's a huge craft store. Again, there's this tiny little entrance, and then you walk in and it opens up to this massive uh, craft store. Now the arch is probably something that, if you've ever seen pictures of Lan Antigua, you will recognize. It's the sort of the symbol that's used to promote the city. Now, the original function was actually for nuns to cross the road without being seen across the top. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, arch. Uh, there's lots of people, often people wearing music. Um, it's it's a real focal point. And actually, you can actually see the arch um, when you're in the square. You can actually see the arch from there. So if you want to do this tour in a different order, you could do it that way round. Um, but if you go under the arch, get to the top of the road, you'll get to another square. So you've got to the, the main town square and then you've got another square. And this is another highlight, and I keep saying this highlight after highlight, but this is uh, La Merced, M-E-R-C-E-D. This is fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. So it's a church. It's a very beautiful church. It's sort of uh, yellowy, and it's got all this very intricate sort of white um, molding and stuff on it. So you can go into the church. But what I would really recommend you do is go and have a look at the church. Very beautiful. Um, and then you just to the left of the church, you can pay a small amount and go into the grounds. Really do go into the grounds. Not many people do it. But inside the grounds is this vast fountain. It was the biggest fountain in the city, a huge fountain in the middle. And then you can climb up to the first floor, which is now because it's ruined, it's opened and you get beautiful views across to the volcanoes. And this uh, La, La Mesa church and convent, it's just gorgeous so it's all this this facade is um, baroque that was the word I was looking for earlier baroque it's this beautiful white and good stuff and I'll, I'll put a picture of that also in the show notes just it's absolutely magnificent a lot of people go there they'll go in the church because you don't have to pay to go in the church but do go to the left and have a look at, at that uh, fountain and then go up great 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 views across um, of the city and whatever then you can basically head along the road and you'll get um, to uh, to San uh, uh, Geromino, which is very pretty. It, it's it's largely just ruins with a pretty garden, and it was got but it's got a very interesting story. Um, so it was built from about the seventeen end of the seventeen about seventeen thirty nine. But what happened is when they were building it, the Spanish king got a little bit miffed because they hadn't got permission to build. They were building it as a school, so they then wouldn't let it operate as a school so it became the royal customs house and uh it's it's a very peaceful nice garden now with sort of some columns and things but also what's great about this part of the world is just behind it is the uh, antique costume house with displays of indigenous guatemalan costumes so it's quite a nice thing to walk along to um a lot of people sort of sit there and relax and just sort of enjoy the sort of the garden but then uh, you know, just behind it is the costume house, which is which is really really nice. Now you can just near <clears throat> next to San uh, Geromino, uh, just sort of uh, just south of San Geromino is this. Uh, the, and you'll see this massive big road that runs down the front of it, which is uh, Calzada Santa Lucia, and there's a huge big market there. It's a massive big market. Now it's not a great market. Um, it hasn't really got handicrafts. It's more where locals buy goods, but it's very busy. It's very popular. Uh, you know, so it's kind of interesting just in terms of seeing uh, locals, but it's not where you would go to buy uh, handicrafts. Handicrafts, I would recommend you buy much more either obviously from the uh, the vendors and things you, you see, or as I meant, mentioned earlier, buy that beautiful shop by Santa Catalina's Arch. Uh, that was really magnificent. That's where I bought most of the stuff. Now, if you're still feeling energetic and you've got time, one of the things that is great to do is you can walk up a hill uh, to a viewpoint uh, which is called Hill of the Cross or 
Cerro de la Cruz. You can get a taxi up as well. There's a very nice park up there. It's got beautiful views. So you get very nice views across the city. So that's a very nice stop. And you, also when you're in the city, you can look up and you can see the kind of look out there. And so it's great for getting views. Uh, you know, so if you've got time, uh, you can walk up there and the map that you'll pick up from the tourism board will show you how to walk up there or just get a taxi uh, up there. And uh, it's, I can't remember how much taxi cost to get up there actually offhand, but it wasn't, wasn't that, that expensive. Now, as you've probably seen, there's a lot to see, but there are a couple of other things that um, are worth seeing. So you've got the um, Archbishop Palace Museum, uh, San Juan del Obispo. It dates back to the 16th century. It's got paintings, it's got sculptures, and it's all, uh, you know, exhibited in a building which dates from that century. So that's the Archbishop Palace Museum. And then you've got um, another place which is very popular and actually comes very highly recommended. And one of the things I noted on some of the tours is they strongly recommend going here, which is the La Azotea Cultural Center. And I think probably why it, people recommend the La Azotea Cultural Center is the three museums in it, these uh, Kojun House, which has got Mayan instruments in. So, uh, you know, particularly if you're interested in that um, and it gives a chance to uh, demonstrate and talk about some of the Mayan culture. There's a coffee museum and there's a, mu a museum of regional costume and crafts. So that's probably also why it's it's highly recommended all the tours because you see a lot of the cultural stuff. So you've obviously got Mayan instruments and a lot of the regional costume and uh, crafts. So a really, really interesting stuff. So as you can see, there's a lot to see, a lot to do in La Antigua. It's very easy to get around, uh, but without some preparation, Without the tourist map, it's very easy to just miss some of these places because often from the outside, they look very unremarkable. You know, so for example, like I was talking earlier about, um, you know, the La Mer Merced uh, church and convent. Most people didn't know that, you know, head to the left uh, and you go in and you get to see the, the beautiful fountain. Uh, there's little tricks and things like that. Uh, that people just didn't realize how impressive they were. You know, you might easily walk past uh, the, the cathedral uh, without realizing just how magnificent it is inside. So, you know, go with a guide, do some preparation, use that map to make sure you don't miss out on anything. As you can also tell, there's a lot to see. So a lot of people do spend a couple of days here just exploring it. And it's also, there's a great sense of atmosphere and vibrancy and lots of things to do, you know, just sit around and enjoy uh, the, the, the vibe, some great restaurants as well. In terms of resources, I'll put those in the show notes, but probably the best uh, of all is the visitguatemala.com site, you know, guidebooks again, I've, I've mentioned. The other thing that's also worth checking on is uh, travel advice for Guatemala. So in the UK, for example, you've got the fco.gov.uk site. In the US, it's uh, www.travel.state.gov. And again, I'll put those links in the show notes. So it's also worth just checking if there's any tr uh, travel advice. And obviously in your local country, if you're not from the UK or the US, you also tr uh, check what, if there's any updated travel advice. So there you have it. That's uh, hopefully some uh, inspiration, some advice, Advice, some tips that's got you excited about La Antigua. I absolutely loved it and hopefully that's come through in this podcast and it's kind of inspired you to go. Uh, once again, thanks to DK Eyewitness Travel Guides for uh, supporting this podcast. Much appreciated and don't forget I'll put links in the show notes so you can also take a look at their top 10 guides. If this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, I'd love it if you subscribed. If even it's the first time, the second time, the hundredth time you've listened to the podcast, I'd really also hugely appreciate it if you left a rating and a review because it makes a huge difference to how the podcast shows up for other people. And of course, it gives me great feedback. And to make that easy for everybody, I've done some short links uh, so it's easy to remember, you know, you might be at the gym or driving or whatever listening to this. So the, all you have to remember is uh, tipsfortravelers.com and Travelers, of course, but with two L's. If you're interested in iTunes, it's slash iTunes TFT. It's only for Tips of Travelers. Stitcher TFT for Stitcher. TuneIn TFT for TuneIn uh, or Google Play TFT if you're a Google Play lover. So until next time, here's to happy, safe, wonderful and magnificent travels. Thank you.